Welcome students. Today we'll be talking about forest management. In the previous course on forest management mensuration, uh, you have been uh, told about uh, different forest measurements. Now, having the knowledge of uh, those measurements, uh, we uh, need to move further in forest management. Uh, you must know that forest management is defined as the practical application of the scientific, technical, and economic principles of forestry. Is the definition given by British Commonwealth Forest Terminology. Now, as per another definition, it's the branch of forestry whose function is the organization of the forest property for management and maintenance by ordering in time and place the various operations necessary for the conservation, protection and improvement of the forest on one hand and the controlled harvesting of the forest on the other. Now, uh, as per the third definition, it is the application of business methods and technical forestry principles to the operation of forest property. Now, these are the four, uh, three definitions, one, two and three about the forest management. Now, talking about sp scope of forest management, uh, forest management mainly involves three tasks. That is, the first is control of growing stock, its structure and its composition the second is administration of the forest property and third is the distribution and marketing of forest produce now how we are going to control our growing stock its structure or its composition means different kinds of species that the type of uh, site we have chosen for the forest and the choice of species that we are going to make to raise any kind of forest how the manipulation uh, of stands is going to be done in the form of different forestry opera operations like thinning uh, or you know any other silvicultural operation now once the manipulation is done we may be ready for the harvesting of produce how the prod produce is to be har harvested it may be in the form of a major forest produce that's wood products or timber or it may be in the form of minor forest produce now then we have to see for the regeneration how we are going to opt for the regeneration is it through natural means or is it uh, is has it to be supplemented with the artificial means now then how we are going to protect our crop this forms overall this forms the control of growing stock its structure and composition now coming towards administration of forest property you have we have to administer this forest property uh, through different resources which may be manpower which may be finance or which may be you know a labor uh, like we have to see how the forest organization is going to work how the person who are managing these forests are to be managed how different works like afforestation like uh, you know different nursery operations how the monitoring and control of those works is uh, going to be done how the labor that is involved in different kinds of activities in a forest their management and welfare is to be seen then how the finance is to be controlled for economy economic efficiency and we in in addition to that forests not only meal meet our you know economic requirements or environmental requirements we also have to keep in consideration the social obligations we in the forest fringe villages or the people who are residing inside the forest they have been uh, given certain rights in in terms of maybe in terms of timber maybe in terms of uh, fuel wood maybe in terms of fodder for their cattle so we have to also have to take uh, care of those needs then we have to make a record of all the activities uh, for our present and future reference now once all the things are all these things are done we have to see the forest that is a uh, uh, forest product that is being generated out of the forest we have to transport that uh, and through effective means of communication uh, from the uh, point of uh, production to the point of where it is sold or the marketing we have to see what is the logging plan in case of timber that we have to adopt we have to see the marketing data what is the present supply and demand scenario in the market and how the price and competition is going to work once our uh, produce 
is brought into the into the market then how we are going to sell our produce different technicalities regarding the sale of our produce and the revenue that we are going to generate it is to be reinvested to the forest or has to be regulated so as to maximize the benefits then uh, principles of forest management are broadly based on the different fall policies forest policies that have been implemented in india from time to time now talking about forest policy of 1984 it was india's first uh, forest policy not of the not of the independent india and where in uh, the public benefit was the sole objective of the uh, you know management of forests forests were something uh, seen um, to be preserved in the hilly areas for maintenance of climatic and physical climatic and physical conditions now the focus was on cultivated land which was to be protected from the devastating uh, you know action of hill torrents and uh, there was an increasing demand for cultivable land as per this forest policy which was to be met through by clearing forest area so you can see clearly see here that the focus was on the agricultural production not on the forestry in terms of conservation preference was given to agriculture over forestry now uh um, as per national forest policy of 1952 more or less it it retained some of the fundal, fundamental concepts that were in the old policy but uh, it 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 went a little further uh, you know in the form of uh, balanced and complementary land use a little uh, concern was shown towards the forest um, uh, deviating from uh, originally uh, paying much emphasis on the agriculture now it was realized that we need to check denudation of mountains regions uh, we need to have a check on erosion along the bank of rivers uh, you know wastelands and uh, invading invading sea sands and shifting sand dunes in the deserts it was realized uh, to establish tree lands for amelioration of physical and chemical conditions promoting the well-being of the people now increasing supply of uh, grazing Uh, for cattle small wood for agricultural implements and firewood this is these are the sub social obligations uh, uh, so that uh, you know and the through uh, providing by providing firewood cow dung is spared for manuring agricultural lands these were also focused in 19, the forest pol national forest policy of 1952 uh, there uh, in this policy there uh, was sustained timber supply Uh, needed to be maintained to defense communication and industry uh, which was the prime factor for deforestation of the forest in those times now uh, it was uh, keeping something for conservation uh, it was decided to kept a minimum one third of the country under forest we should not go beyond uh, below this uh, percentage wherein we have we had to maintain 60% Uh, of forest land in the himalayas and uh, 20% in the plains so there was a little uh, shift from the old policy in 1952 uh, then this policy also advocated functional classification of uh, india's forest the first was was the protection forest those forests which must be preserved or created for physical and climatic conditions then we had national forest wherein we had to meet the needs of defense communication industry and general other general purposes of public importance then there was another category which were devised in this national forest policy village forests which have to be maintained to provide firewood then small timber for agricultural implements and other forest produce for local requirements and to provide grazing for cattle all the activities which are uh you know useful for the village people to meet their uh needs then there was another category as tree lands these are um, more or like the forest crop which are uh, which do outside the scope of the ordinary forest management are essential for amelioration of the physical conditions of the forestry you can see these tree lands today occur in the form of trees outside forests uh, in the present times which were to be are to be maintained for 
uh, amelioration of physical conditions then in uh, by 42nd amendment to the constitution in 1976 forest and wildlife were brought on the concurrent list in the seventh schedule this has enabled the central government to play a more effective role it was the president of india who promulgated the forest conservation ordinance in 1980 which put severe restrictions on de-reservation of forest and the use of forest land for non forestry purposes now uh, by the 42nd amendment to the constitution in 1976 forests were brought to the concurrent list in the 7th schedule this has enabled central government to play an effective role what is the concurrent list is that both state as well as the center have an uh, effective role in the management of forest and it was done by the president of india promulgated the forest conservation ordinance which put severe restrictions on de-reservation of forests or use of forest land for non forestry purposes without without the approval of the central government now there are some peculiar features of the forest taking forest as a business enterprise and taking any other normal business enterprise unlike agriculture enterprise or any other manufacturing uh, unit forestry is based on a long investment agriculture crops are annual or any other product uh, we are producing in the factories those are uh, you, you know produced in a very small amount of time unlike forestry which is to be invested for a long term say 10 years 15 years or more than that the second uh, the second is the identity of the product and the manufacturing plant now we know the manufacturing plant is separate and the product is separate both can be separated in in terms of normal business enterprise whereas in whereas in forestry the trees are the manufacturing unit and the increment we which which we get on the trees is the product that means the manufacturing plant and the product that we get from it are inseparable both are uh, you know uh, the same so it is uh, you know sometimes it becomes difficult to separate the product on a short term basis from the manufacturing plant number 3 is the multiple and varied land use we know that forests uh, provide us timber they may provide us with minors forest produce in addition to that they have uh, these forests have different uses including uh, climatic amelioration soil you know um, uh, amelioration uh, you know biodiversity um, you know providing oxygen providing you know a, a house to glaciers a s- a snow uh, which form the source of perennial water and many other things so it doesn't have any one or single use but have a multiple uh, use now another peculiar feature of forest as an enterprise is that these are placed at the locations which are less accessible and less fertile so the forest enterprise requires long term investment executed through a written document known as working plan what is a working plan a working plan is a written scheme of management aiming at continuity of continuity of policy controlling the treatment of a forest so that's all about uh, introduction to forest management